Now, is there anybody that's really glad to be in the house of God this morning? Come on, give him praise. Cool, I'll preach to the three that are here then. Listen, um, I- I'm pumped about today. It's a weird day. It's a strange day. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome, would you three please stand up? Uh, Elijah Ortega, and not my Elijah Ortega, but hold on. What, what, don't, 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 let, me get, let me get through the introductions first, okay? Let's start over here with Jose. No, let's end with Jose. Let's start with Jose. And with, that's Jose Fernandez. He, uh, um, and that's Zamir Rice. And that's Elijah Ortega, who is my cousin Elijah Ortega, not my son Elijah Ortega. And these three champions, uh, one of the biggest tournaments that uh, occur in, um, in the county, it's the Wilson Tournament. These junior hires uh, placed at this tournament. Elijah took seventh, eighth. He took eighth. Zamir took fourth. Seventh? And Jose took first. No, third. Um, so, <laughs> would you just go ahead and, and, and uh, congratulate these and welcome these guys. Sit down. In my book, they all took first. Because as you know, what's important to me is that you give your best, that you do your best, that you just get out there and, and do the work. Now, the reason why they came to church today, um, they were forced to come to church today because... They, actually, I tricked them to come to church today because I put an offer on the table the, uh, for them, and that is that if you place at Wilson, I will take you out to eat. Zamir said he had never been to, to a particular uh, uh, restaurant in town, so we said, okay, well, let's go there. Then we opened up the invitation um, that we would take them out to eat to this restaurant if they placed at Wilson. These three gentlemen did, um, but they didn't know that the caveat first was you've got to come to church then I'll take you to get something to eat. Glory to God. Um, I will do whatever I got to do to reach. We reach the one. We reach the one. I am pumped. I am pumped because not only do I have my wrestlers here, which I'm always excited about, which I'm always telling you guys about, um, but I'm excited because um, this weekend was also the youth retreat. And they had an amazing time out there. That's the reason for the balloons. In a few minutes, they're going to come through that door. We're going to make a whole lot of noise. We're going to welcome them in. Then they're going to shut up and sit down while I get through my message. Amen? And then they can come up here and give us some testimonies of what God has been doing in them. Listen, I prepared the shortest message I have ever prepared in my life. This is the shortest message I have ever prepared. That doesn't mean I'm going to deliver it in the shortest possible time. That just means it's the shortest message I've ever prepared. Okay, so we're not looking at three-hour service today. We're only looking at an hour and a half. Okay, so um, let me just jump right in real quick because, like I said, I know they're on their way. I know they're almost here. I just want to warm you up with this. I want to finish the series that we've been in, which is Jesus is the Word. Uh, we started the year uh, realizing that man doesn't live by bread alone, but, but, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We jumped into John 1. And um, the truth of the matter is, this is the fourth week that we've been in John 1, and we haven't left John 1. And can I tell you also, we're not leaving John 1 today. Uh, we're going to finish John 1, uh, a verse, uh, uh, ch- John chapter 1. Uh, we're going to finish that chapter, and then maybe in a couple weeks, uh, we'll, we'll jump into John chapter 2. How's that? Uh, hopefully then, by the end of the year, we'll get through the book of John. I'm not sure. The only thing I'm sure of is that through this process is that we are going to do exactly what we said, which is we're going to reach the one. We're gonna, we understand that reaching the one is triune. That means that we're going to reach up, we're going to reach, and we're going to reach. Okay, so we're going to reach up, we're going to reach in, and we're going to reach out. Today's a combination of a few, and we're going to go ahead and hit it really hard. Uh, as you know, we've been in, in, in John chapter 1. I'm just going to read through this really quick. We've already, um, for the most part, i maybe jump around a little bit just for the sake of time. But uh, um, ears. Open. Come on now. Ears. Open. Hearts. Ready. Yes, Lord. Lord, by their very confessions, they have said that their ears are open. So, Lord, speak clearly. Yes. Speak clearly through your servant today, Lord God, that whatever may come out of my mouth, oh God, would be translated exactly to what you want to go into their ears. Lord, they, we've confessed right now that our hearts are ready. Lord, our hearts are ready to receive this word, this word that is the seed that is going to go deep into our hearts and produce the fruit that is necessary for life transformation from the inside out. When that fruit matures, Lord God, let that fruit be given away, for we know it's not for us, and we know that fruit is called love. 
We give you the glory right now for what we will receive and what we will do with what we get. In Jesus' name, and God's people said. Somebody said to me once that I get really excited that I may preach a little bit different. I think even they, they said better when we have guests. So if you want your pastor to preach good, bring guests. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was... Are we, are we up? We're going to go with some dramatic pauses so that you can help me read. Amen? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was... And the Word was... Hallelujah. All things that were made were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Guys, would you go ahead and welcome... City Impact Youth Group that has just come back from their youth retreat. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You can get up. Give them a hug. They've been gone all week. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Go ahead. Slap them in the forehead if they need it. Some of you think it's cold. It's not cold in here. It's cold outside. In here, it's warm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, guys, if you're happy to see your, your, your youth in the house, go ahead and give God the praise for it. Glory. Hey, no, keep that. Hold that. Just hold that, because I don't want to get confused with the other mics. Mm. By the way, um, Pastor Lisa, my, uh, my grand puppy is still alive, just so that you know. Uh, he almost wasn't. I stepped on him a few times. Carmel, Carmel had to let him know who the, who the mama in the house was. And Bear got a taste of his own medicine from being, um, uh, 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 the puppy just kept on biting at Bear's ears, like Bear used to bite at Carmel. But I'm sorry, guys, this is just, you know, it's, it's that, I know they've been away, they've missed their puppy, and i just trying to let them know what's going on. Guys, welcome back. Uh, I am excited to hear what God, did God do anything while you were gone? That's what I want to know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is this the type of excitement you got while you were there? Because if not, this ain't happening again. I'm telling you that right now. If this is how they're going to act coming back, they will never go again. Can you tell me, did God do anything while you guys were gone? I got a little bit. I got a, I got, yes. Okay, that's better. That's better. We're going to work. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on this. I want to encourage you today because we are in this. Uh, a Jesus is... We've been in this series about Jesus in the Word. Um, I'm just going to warm you up before I get off this, uh, uh, before I get, get out of here. And today we're talking about Jesus is the proclaiming Word. Jesus is the proclaiming Word. In verse 18, we can see that according to this verse, that Jesus came to reveal God to man. He came to reveal God to man. And one of the things about today that I'm excited about and if you want to go back and read that whole, that whole chapter, one, verse 1 through 14 or 18, whatever it is, uh, go ahead and do so. I'm just going to pick out some spots in it just for speech's sake because I'm excited to hear what God's done in your life. But I'm more excited to hear Jesus proclaimed as the Word through your Word and through your experience. Amen? And if it's not good, we're not doing this again. Last week we discussed that Jesus was a personalized Word. The week before that, we discussed how Jesus was the pre-existent word. In verse 18, we see that, that God reveals, that Jesus came to reveal God to man. This word, declare, in verse 18, means to unfold and to tell. It's not just a, a telling, like a, a just telling a fact, but it came to reveal, to slowly become, to, to, it, it's, like, it's like seeing something fade in. Seeing something fade in. Do you know that sometimes uh, um, taking something in at one time too fast is too much to handle? You never really get it. Any of you ever been to an IMAX movie? IMAX movie, anybody? 
Anybody ever sit up front in an IMAX movie? Can't stand sitting up front. You know why? Because I can't get it all. I've got to move back to be able to see the full screen. And that's kind of like the way Jesus reveals himself to us. A little bit at a time as we can get it and understand him. Amen? So Jesus came to reveal God to man in a real and practical way. So he didn't come. Man needed to see God not just as a lawgiver, but also as, thank God for Valentine's Day, as a lover. Lover of my life. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I really appreciated what my wife said about, about uh, uh, Jesus being her, her significant other. Jesus is my only one. And you, when you're married and you have that mindset that Jesus comes first and your wife comes second, you will be all right. I said, when you put Jesus first and your spouse second, you will be all right. That's if truly Jesus is first. Because <laughs> sometimes you've got to listen to what Jesus got to say before you listen to what your wife got to say. That just means that sometimes she can be right. Ooh. Ouch. I did say that out loud, didn't I? That was going on in my head. That wasn't supposed to come out of my mouth. All right, let's get to this quick. Let's get to this quick. I want you to know that Jesus did this. He revealed himself not just in the way he was born, but in the way he lived and also how and in the manner that he died. We know that, 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 that the manner in which Jesus lived his life is a manner that we can see God revealed, but not just God revealed. I want you to understand that, that I, didn't, I didn't plan it this way, but to see God, God's love revealed to man. God's love revealed to man. It's one thing for God to be revealed because God can reveal himself to me and he has revealed himself as mighty and powerful and, and, and creator and all of these other big, enormous, mag, majesty kind of things. But for him to reveal himself as my lover, that takes an intimacy that some of you aren't ready to understand yet. Ooh, I got to get an amen out of that one. Jesus came to put God on display before men. And he did it in two primary ways. Two ways and I'm done. I told you it was going to be the shortest message ever. Usually I got four points. Today I only got two. He came to proclaim the light. And he came to proclaim life. He came to proclaim the light. In verses 4 through 9 of, of John chapter 1, we see that he came to the world in spiritual darkness. He opened the curtains of grace Revealing the truth of God to men that were wandering, wandering in darkness. He came to be the light, the Bible says. Jesus came to illuminate the path. It's one thing to be on the path. Don't hate me on this one, okay? Some of you think that you're on the path, but you ain't got no light to ensure that you stay Some of you really think that you're on the path and you walk in this path, but you ain't got no word, you ain't got no light showing you that that is the right path. You could have fallen off that path or gone into a different direction, not even realized it, until the light is shined on. You go, Oh, how in the name of all that is holy did I get here? This is when you turn around and say, I don't know what happened. I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I ended up in jail. I don't know how I ended up with a needle in my arm. I don't know how I, en do I need to keep going? I don't know how I got ended up with AIDS. I don't know how I ended up, am I being too real for this group right now? Is this too young? Are you too young? Well, I mean, we, we, can, we can take this back to, we can take this back to PG if you want. He came to proclaim the light. Jesus came to illuminate the pathway so men, for men to know the direction towards God. This light will accomplish one of two things. See, light has a tendency to accomplish one of two things. Light has a tendency. It, what's, does anybody remember what my favorite or my least favorite bug is? Anybody? 
A what? A cockroach. You pay attention. I'm, I'm so proud of you. I can't stand roaches. I can't stand roaches. I, I, I remember uh, uh, as a little kid in, in Dominican Republic and uh, going into my father's house. I was visiting. He was down there. And I remember getting there one time. We got there late one night. It was after like a rainstorm or whatever. And, 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 and hitting the lights. And these big nasty roaches that were in there. Big nasty roaches. The lights came on. And I went in the room, and as I, th- I think I might have been 12 or 10, I don't remember how old I was. I just know that I was freaked out, and I've been tormented by roaches since. Oh, that ain't the end of my story, though. Because these roaches just scattered. Scattered. Okay? Now, here in the city, you may, you may find these little roaches like this. Some of you call the black bugs water bugs. But can I tell you, those are roaches, too. Okay? They're just, they're just, they just come from a different fashion and way. We, li- we like to make it sound a little bit cleaner by saying they're water bugs. Now, they're roaches, too. And when I see those little black, nasty bugs, too, I kill them like roaches. Can't stand them. All right? This big, during your, during your house, about this big, normal roaches about, you know, infested. In Okinawa, Japan, while I was in the Marine Corps, some of you, have you ever heard my, my, my roach story in Okinawa? Okay. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done real quick. Done real quick. In Okinawa, Japan, the roaches in Okinawa, Japan, Fly. And they're this big. And the worst part about it is they're attracted to light. They're not repelled by light. They're attracted to light. So I'm on patrol in the, in the town, right, with, my, with, with, with another Marine Corps buddy, and we're walking. And we see, and I look up, and I see these bugs r- r- uh, flying around in the middle of the night. It was, you know, about midnight, flying around these light poles. And I'm like, yo, what the crap is that? I'm cleaning it up for you. And he goes, yo. He was like, yo, oh, th- th- those are roaches. I said, oh, no. One flew down. Oh, that's a roach. Get away from that thing. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> Wanted to. So we're walking down. We're avoiding the roaches, looking. All of a sudden, I felt something. I'm walking, and I felt something hit the back of my neck. I went... <laughs> I felt that thing hit the back of my neck. I, I didn't even stop while I was like, pa! I went, mm. That thing took off and then started attacking me. I'm in the middle of the road going like this, trying to box a flying roach. That's my story. Look, some things get attracted to light, some things run from light. The question is, the question is, what is it to you? If Jesus is going to be that light, it's going to attract some people to that light, and it's going to repel some people from that light. Where are my points? This light will either cause men to repent of their sins and run to the open arms of the Lord, or it will cause them to reject that light and continue their course of darkness. One will lead to salvation, and the other will lead to damnation. John 3.36 puts it like this. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. That is one of the, the, those, for me, those are the saddest verses in Scripture. The fact that Jesus can be revealed in the light to you and to us and to people and that people will still reject that light. Let me be done real quick here. He He came to proclaim life. Jesus came to tell the one. He came to tell the one. He came to tell the one that there was a way to come to the Father and experience eternal life. Verses 12 and 13 of John, of John chapter 1 makes it clear that anyone who will respond in a positive way to the light of God and will come to Jesus and receive Him can experience a new birth and will enter into eternal life. Heaven can be your home. It doesn't have to be this big ceremonial thing. It can just be simply accepting the light of Jesus. Can I get one amen? Jesus not only came to tell about, didn't only come to tell the one, he came to show the one. That this life, that this life comes, that this eternal life comes, not by 
our own natural blood or birth. In other words, you can't get into heaven because of who you know. You can't get into heaven by who your father was, by who your mother was, by who your uncle is. Is anybody still tracking with me? This, this gift of eternal life does not come by, what this, by the good stuff that you've done. And you can't work your way into heaven. And, and let me throw this one at you for, for my Christians in the house. After you get saved, why are you still trying to work yourself back into heaven? You're in heaven already. So why do you work and act like you've got to work your way back? Remember that the good works that you do is because you love Jesus. You get to do the good works. You don't have to. But the truth of the matter is that if you love him, you want to. That was good. I'm going to have to get the, the, this piece on video because. Verses 12 and 13 make it clear that anyone who responds. I already did that one. Let's move forward. Okay. Not by your own works because it's not by the flesh. It's not by the work of another. Or the work or the will of man. I can't, no matter, listen. As your pastor, I, as much as I want you to go to heaven, I can't make it happen for you. Uh, um, my junior high coaches, uh, that's one of the things that we, we've told our, our junior high wrestlers over and over again. Every single time we came to a match or a tournament, and I mean, look, um, the Wilson tournament, we were pumped. We wanted... What, what, what did I say to you, Jose, right before you stepped into your final match? I was like, give me your singlet, give me your headgear, get me your shoes, because I want to wrestle this match for you. I want to win this. But I can't do it for you. I can't win that for you. Same thing with heaven. Same thing with eternity. No matter how much I see your life is so messed up, so jacked up, you're full of sin, you're walking in darkness, I know, I know, I know the answer is Jesus, and Jesus is always the answer. I can't want it or will it for you. Jesus will always be the proclaimed word of God. Not just because of what he says as far as the Logos word, but also because of how he lived his life and because of what he's done for that life. I believe personally, I believe personally that this proclaiming word of God continues through our testimonies. It's not just a, 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 a John. See, I love... I love John 3.16. How many times have you heard me preach John 3.16? Never. You will hear me preach on John 3.16 because it's part of the book of John. But you have never seen me give you an expository teaching on John 3.16. Not because it's not relevant, but because John 3.16 is supposed to be lived out through your testimony. For me to tell you that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that you would have eternal life. Now I want to see that in Christians lived. Let you be the word that is read. Paul calls us an epistle, a letter to men to be read. Now this experience is Pastor, when is Pastor Josh at? Come here son. He looks all clean, half shaven. Got a haircut. It's Valentine's Day. Is that what it is? Huh? Huh? He's a newlywed, so he's got, he's got to look cute, right? What you got planned for Valentine's, son? Sleep. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They're newlyweds. They can do whatever they want to do. They call it sleeping. What? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're a little. They're going to sleep. Anyway, um, this is this man here who you know I love, um, my, my, my spiritual son, my knucklehead son, my pain. The, anyway, um, this man's a living epistle that is read by men. As my lead pastor to the youth group, um, this weekend... Um, 
I can't wait to hear. Can you get that microphone, please? I can't wait to hear all that God has done and how he's done it this past weekend. If you're excited to hear what God's done in the youth group, would you give him praise, please? Hallelujah. As you can tell, they're quiet because they're tired. Um, I know, right? Uh, this weekend has been just... Uh, I know we're going to have some of them actually come up and share a little bit of what God has done in their life. And uh, this weekend we definitely talked. Uh, we had different sessions. Some of the kids were like, why so many sessions? But I'm a... a a believer of teaching our kids, discipling our kids, and teaching them what the Word of God says about everything. I mean, we talked about what it means not to give up in God, to continue moving forward. Even if you mess it up and screw it up and people push you down, you get up again and keep on going, following God. We talked about having God as your first love. He is your first love. Valentine's, right? He is your first love. Setting aside all other idols that we may have in our lives. We talked about godly character. And what I did for the godly character is we posted all the ungodly characteristics of what, uh, of what they are and, and, and described them. And then we talked about then we ought to live the opposite of them. And the Bible talks about that in Galatians, right? What, what are the, some of the characteristics of a godly character? The fruit of love. Love love is patient, kind, goodness, right? And those are the things that we ought to pursue. And then we had a, uh, a really interesting panel. And parents, uh, we f please, ap I apologize ahead of time if they start having this conversation with you. Um, if you're not ready to have that conversation with them. But then again, we talked about it. Um, I had a... Uh, uh, a few pastor friends of mine also be there, be a part of that panel. We talked about what scripture, God's design for a sexual relationship. That it's for marriage. And what the Bible says and how that looks like. And we dug, we dug really deep on that panel because they had some really good questions um, about uh, just sexuality in general, uh, of, of what the world thinks and how what the scripture says about it. So if they talk to you about it, Hey, I mean, we gave it to them. <laughs> we talked about it. And then um, shortly after that, we talked about uh, the armor of God. Uh, Pastor Noel, who, who is a friend of mine, talked about what it means that this is a spiritual warfare. And so the battle against sin is a spiritual battle. Though it may manifest sometimes in physical ways, right? And so we, uh, we shared that about putting on the armor of God, protecting ourselves, not only in a defensive way, but having the sword, right, the word of God also to battle it. And then Saturday night was just a great, amazing, just time of worship. Uh, I had another pastor, Pastor Trev from uh, Tr uh, York Assemblies of God come out, and he was just talking to the kids about, um, he was talking about uh, that, what was it, what was his title? Trash or treasure? Trash or treasure? And he was talking about how God consider, considers us treasure. That though we sometimes, uh, God has to dig through our trash, but he always finds value in us. So it was a great word. Uh, they were touched by that. Um, and God spoke to some of them. I know God spoke to them, and we, we actually did a testimony this morning of just kids sharing that. So I'm going to ask a couple of our kids here to just come up and share what, has, what, what they learned and what God has taught them. I know you guys had a preview over there. That's why we did it over there, so like that you guys would be ready for this. All right. So who would be the first person to come up and share? You want to come up? Sure. Okay, um, the night Pastor Noel 
preached and Pastor Trevor, um, we had this big prayer worship time and um, all the leaders lined up and prayed for all the youth kids in our group. So basically, um, Pastor Noel prayed for me and told me that um, I'm someone who like shares brightness around. And then he just prayed for like blessings. And then after that, it was just like really cool because like you could feel the presence of God in the room. Anybody else? <laughs> I was looking at you, but I was trying to be like. <laughs> All right, on Saturday night that um, that everybody was praying, that was Pastor Trev there, and I had asked him to pray for me. And I had always told him that uh, that I needed to take my step. And so, because I have been always cooped up, always keeping myself like away from everybody, being like impulsive and stuff. So this is me trying to take my step. Uh, <laughs> <I'm actually laughs> and then okay. And then soon after that, soon after Pastor Chev prayed for me uh, Pastor Noel came up to me and he was asking me if I was one of the people that also went through depression because the people beside me they both raised they both raised their hands but I didn't but he still knew that something was wrong with me he knew that I was going through depression that I was going through anxiety the reason why was because I'm scared I have fear because I don't feel like I'm good enough for God and for the people in my life. So <laughs> then uh, before he started praying for me, he told me that I'm good enough, that God made me and God loves me for who I am. So and then, yeah, this was all yesterday. And then today, before we came back, uh, I pretty much said the same thing. And then there was a youth leader, uh, what is his name? Ralphie. After I said this, he pulled me to the side and he said that since, since I've been through the same thing that other people have gone through, depression, anxiety, and I'm actually stepping up, that I would be, that I would be a motivational speaker to help them. To, yeah to get them out of their shell and to step up like I'm doing. <laughs> now this is a kid that uh, I can only get two words out of him for a whole month that I've known him. Ricky. This is Ricky. Amen. <laughs> also, um, who ac also came with us this weekend uh, was also City Reach Philly. So they brought their youth group with us. Um, they were part of there. So you, you heard Ralphie was one of their youth leaders that came along um, and his wife. And it was a great, amazing time for them as well. They shared a couple of testimonies too of what God had done in their lives as well. Uh, but they couldn't be here. They had to go straight over there. So anybody else? Come on. My name is Amanda. Okay, well, start from the beginning. I came into this weekend struggling from depression and having worries because I've been having, like, medical issues with my brain and stuff, and I don't know what's going on. So I came in there, like, trying to find something different because all I've been going through is depression and worry and sickness and oh, people telling me that I might have this, this might happen, and then it, like, get worse. 
So I, okay, when I first was, when I, okay. <laughs> it's Saturday, Saturday, Pastor Noel was talking, and he was talking about how, like, depression is in your head. Like, I was, and it was funny because he didn't know. He said that, like, it's in your mind, and he gave me the message that God is carrying me through the struggle I'm going through. And he didn't know that I was going through the struggle of not knowing what's in my brain, so I'm always worrying all the time. And he was saying how depression's in my head, and I told him that physically there's something going on with my brain. Because he was talking about how the devil attacks the mind and the heart. And I said, while he said that, I was just like, the more I'm getting into the things of God, the more he's trying to attack my brain. And I'm like, that's crazy because mentally and physically he's attacking my brain. So I was getting prayed for and he was like, it was crazy because I told him everything that I was going through and he's like, it all makes sense now. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> so then the other guy, his name is, what is it, Antoine? Antoine. And he's a really cool dude, the way he talks. <laughs> he was telling me, oh, him and Pastor Noel were telling me how this is what I've learned, that I have the gift of discernment, and I could like read people just like by the way their spirit feels and all this stuff and it was really cool because I did it's like I knew about it but I didn't know it was that so now I know how to yeah now I know to like apply it to my life and then yeah and then Pastor Trev he was like it was funny because what he was going to preach about like he was talking to me so it was just like, it was crazy, because Saturday, all the messages were like for me. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is Jeremy. Hey. So, that's my little sister, Amanda. Uh, I went into the trip almost the same way as her. Now, medical issues, but I just had something on my heart. I didn't really know what I wanted to do going into this trip, but I just knew I had to go in knowing that I was going to do something. But, um,. Recently, God gave me kind of like my calling and to become a police officer. So now that I knew what I had to do, I just needed a little bit of help going in the direction that I needed to go. So when I went, uh, Pastor Noel, he came up to me, and I didn't tell him I was going to be a police officer, but uh, he came up to me and he's like, did you tell me you are going to become a police officer? I'm like, no. <laughs> and then he just told me, he's like, you have the, you're expecting to go out to calls to people and be there for them and like pour life into them at your calls, but you're also going to have to pour life into the people you work with. And you're going to change the men who've been divorced three times, the men who are lost in depression, the men who just need God in their life. And it changed. It kind of affirmed the way I felt. Now that I know what I want to do. <laughs> so, God is good. Praise God. Hallelujah.
Do I have to introduce you? No, you don't have to. <laughs> How's it going, family? Um, just real quick, me, Pastor Lisa, and Pastor Josh knew God was up to something three weeks ago. Um, the one Saturday night service, we just had God's presence just drop on the youth, and there was just they were just all over the place. So we knew that God was starting to set the groundwork of what he was going to do in this trip. And one of the greatest things that we saw on Saturday night was that spirit of bondage that the kids were under, broken. And one of the awesome things that, you know, we got to encounter this morning when we allowed the kids to give their testimony was, you know, they all said, I feel free again. I feel free. So my challenge to the rest of the church and the church family is continue praying for the youth because they are under major attack. You know, and Satan is trying to take out the youth. But as long as we got people like Pastor CJ, Pastor Josh, Pastor Lisa, and myself, we are going to continue to fight for these kids because they need us. But we need you guys behind us. We need you guys to be behind us praying for us every day. You know, and I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of a team with Pastor Josh and Pastor Lisa because they do such an awesome job with the kids. And I'm just adding on to that. But this weekend just proves, especially to you youth, that one, God is real. Two, that he cares and loves you. And three... Don't you give up for what God wants to do in your life. Because the day you give up is the day you miss your blessing. And the harder it gets, that means you're one step closer to your blessing. So continue striving for what, God, what God's trying to do. That was what this whole weekend was about. It's not, we wanted you to have an encounter with God so that you never forget God. And that's exactly what he did. You know, with Pastor Josh and Pastor Trev, Pastor Noel, and, you know, it wasn't just for the youth. Like, we got blessed too. Don't, don't think that we didn't get blessed as well. Like, I mean, it was cold. Like, I don't know what it is right now, but up in the mountain, it was like six degrees. Like, I was putting gas in the van this morning just, just shivering, you know. Like, I, it was really cold. But you know what? We do it because we love you, and we know that God loves you, and that with God that you guys can break down the mountains and that you can do whatever he called you to do. So, you know, um, I just ask that you continue to pray for us, continue to walk with us in this journey. Because with you guys, Jesus says that when there's two or three gathered in my name, I am in the midst. And I know that God is going to be doing more great things. And he's going to continue doing great things. So, Praise God. I guess I don't have to preach anymore. It was a lot of fun. I guess I can get back to the second part of my message then, huh? Amen. Glory to God, I get to preach again. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh no, not more. I am pumped, overly excited for what God is doing at City Reach Church, period. I'm thankful for, for experiences with God, for having impact, having an impact with God. I want to leave you before I pray with something to encourage not just the youth, not just the children, not just those that are above 50 or below 5. I have found it to be so true that whenever you're in need of something and you remove the focus away from what your need is and try to help somebody else out with their need, let, let me put it in, 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 in church terms. When you stop worrying about your own blessing and you start being a blessing, you get blessed. Okay? That doesn't mean that your situation, your need, your circumstance isn't real. It just means that you're willing to put your faith in action and say, God, if you can do it for them, you can do it for me. So for you, those of you that are here visiting, for those of you that have that, that don't typically come on a Sunday. I want to encourage you. 
Go find that person. Don't let this weekend for you youth, don't let this weekend have just been a Holy Ghost goosebump weekend for you. And then you come back getting your goosebump from Saturday to Saturday. But go find that person that you sit next to in school. Go find that person that you talk to at, at, at uh, whatever sporting event you're at, whatever club you're a part of, whatever mess you're in. Go get them out of that mess. Bring them to church Sunday. Bring them to, group, bring them to Saturday service. Bring them to, to prayer on, on Tuesdays. Whenever the doors are open, if you can get them in here, I'm going to tell you something. If you can get them in here, that means that there's an opportunity for them not to be on the street. Hello? And that truth also applies to us adults. You want to see God move in your life? Reach the one. Would you please stand? Jesus is the proclaiming word. He's proclaimed not just in the word of God as we've seen in John chapter 1, but he's the proclaiming word that lives throughout each one of us through our testimonies that we give. Don't let your testimony grow stagnant by not having a continuous experience with God, but let your testimony continue to live as you share your testimony with other people that need to hear it. This is a safe environment where you can turn around and say, I'm scared. I'm afraid, I'm lonely, I'm this or I'm that. But how many other people that are out there need to hear what your struggles are? How many other people need to hear what your experience has been? And by you sharing that experience, and I'm talking to all of us out there, by you sharing your experience of what God has done or is doing, how they can be encouraged to come and partner with God to help them get what they need to move on. Is there an amen out there? Would you lift your hands up towards heavens as if you were to receive a gift that's already yours, but more importantly than your hands, raise your hearts and receive a blessing that can only come from the Lord Himself. As He instructed His priests in old days to pray this prayer over you, receive it. The Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace. Father I thank you for the word today. And I thank you for the living epistles. That shared what you are doing in their lives. Today O God. I thank you Lord for every word that was spoken. That glorifies you. Lord I... I, I ask, O oh God, that you be with those that are far from you today, Lord God, and those that don't even may know you, Lord God. Lord, I pray for, for the ones that are struggling with, with whatever their inadequacies may be. But Lord, strengthen them. Remove any fear that's in their lives, O oh God, and do them with power that can only come from you and from on high. Encourage the one that needs to be encouraged, O oh God. Now I pray, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of our Messiah Jesus. And God's people said, if you received anything from the Lord, would you give Him the glory right now? Hallelujah.